Hey everyone, James from TDB here bringing you another in between episode. Um, so today it's going to be another non drinking episode uh, and uh, kind of going to be talking about something a little bit controversial, probably one of the most controversial topics in the uh, realm of poor storage, and that is airflow. Um, or some people prefer terms like air exchange and uh, I mean, it's just kind of how much airflow uh, you need uh, in order for storage to work, if you need a lot, a little, or basically none at all. Um, and I am going to be coming at this from an angle with kind of a provocative title, especially for someone that doesn't usually um, orient towards the things. And I am going to be saying airflow is very overrated, um, especially in the Western sense when we're talking about cold or dry environments that it's being um, stored in. Um, going to be talking about through examples. Um, I find these examples to be more informative. Um, other people might find scientific papers and stuff like that to be interesting and informative in terms of how poor ages. For me personally, um, I feel like I can understand and relate to just examples and teas I've tasted and things like that. And so for me, that's an easier way for me to uh, have an understanding of the topic. Um, so if you are interested in those things, seek those out elsewhere. Uh, not going to be talking about it sort of in the strictly science realm here. Um, okay, so airflow, uh, you'll usually, uh, you run into this advice quite often that uh, you need to have some air exchange of tea, uh, of, of between your tea and uh, uh, I, the air, uh, basically. Um, and so you need to have oxygen exchange and stuff like that, which is a reason that is often given why stuff like sealing teas, um, things like Marco storage in a hot box sealed in Mylars would be considered uh, bad in that sense as well. Um, uh, and just because your tea is not having regular air circulation or exchange. So you'll see terms like you're suffocating the tea and things like that. And for me personally, I don't know uh, that, I, I feel like it's based on conventional wisdom for um, a lot of not so great reasons. I can't say that I've had a tea where I've said, oh wow, that was way too, um, that had way too much, uh, that was suffocated basically. It didn't have enough airflow or air exchange. Is it possible I've had teas that uh, that applies to? Yeah, it's possible. But compared to something like Kunming storage uh, or, or a very dry storage, I've definitely had teas where I'm like, ooh, not a fan of the storage because it's too dry or too cold. Um, that is very common. Likewise, I've also had uh, plenty of experiences where a tea is too wet uh, and, or too dank. And that can also be solved by um, airflow or something like that. Um, I think that's a legitimate case for airflow, but we're talking more in terms of long term. I want to be storing my tea for five years, uh, 10 years. Is airflow necessary or not? And, and how much uh, is necessary? Um, so one reason why I think uh, airflow is required um, a little bit to a lot um, is very wrong. is just because of historical standards of how um, tea is stored. We can think of strictly uh, examples in East Asia. Uh, so tea has historically been stored by um, uh, basically tea vendors uh, that are storing it in really, really huge quantities. Are these tea vendors rotating each individual cake often? Absolutely not. Um, I, I mean, I don't think any, any person holding a significant amount of tea is going to be doing that very often. Uh, and we think about how these teas are packed. They're not unpacked cake by cake too. We are having seven cakes in a bamboo tong. So the cakes are not being moved around or, or seeing air exchange within that. And within that tong, will you historically have, I believe, 12 tongs uh, per jian. And that jian is in another box. So we're talking just like boxes upon boxes. And within the boxes, we have tongs. And within the tongs, we have, jian, we have cakes. Is there being a lot of air, a lot of air exchange? No, no. Which is why I think that people that argue that you need to have a lot of space between the cakes and you shouldn't pack your cakes too tight. I just think that's straight wrong. I, I think the evidence doesn't support that. I don't think there's any historical basis for that at all. Um, and uh, another what reason, when you go into a tea vendor shop in uh, Hong Kong, for instance, where they might have some fancy cakes, what they'll be doing is they will be uh, plastic wrapping those cakes. Uh, there are some people that are also adamant against plastic, topic for another time, um, 
but they're limiting the airflow of the cake. And you could say, oh, yeah, the plastic wrap's porous or whatever, but they are seeing the airflow as being sort of a detriment to the cake in that case, and they're using um, plastic to reduce the amount of airflow given. So I think that pretty much for me convinces me that airflow being something that needs to be regularly circulated um, by having like like fans rolling 24 seven or something like that. I think that's, I think that's just incorrect. Um, so those are two examples based sort of in East Asia. Um, so the second question you can ask yourself is, is no airflow okay? And, or is a little airflow better? Um, and this one I think is much more up for debate. Um, and you look at a place, uh, you look at Marco's tea, or you look at a tea that's been sealed, um, like I believe the Naked Iwu, although there's a little bit of mystery uh, to me at least on how that, uh, that tea was stored. And you can have sort of different, uh, I don't know, there's, there's different ways to think about that. And for me personally, I'm not totally sure how I feel about that question, but I don't think there's too many people that are struggling with uh, answering the question of, should I totally vacuum seal in my tea or should I have a little bit of airflow? Personally, I have started to slowly come around to the idea that maybe it's possible to do an approach like Marco uh, from the tea I've tried from him and it's been a very limited sample size. Um, I, ha I think it's pretty promising. Um, the results that he has. We'll have to see what happens in the long term. I think there's a lot of people um, doing uh, similar storage setups to his that are heated. And uh, because he's storing teas within Mylar in the heated box, um, it also, uh, it also uh, uh, um, uh, ends up being very, very low airflow. Um, okay, so I do think there is a small case for airflow um, in terms of just uh, storing tea in the West too. And I think that's mainly just because when you store tea in something big like a Euro cave or whatever, and it's really packed, what could happen is you could have a corner of the tea, probably in the lower uh, corners, that might be a little bit danker and the relative humidity might be a little bit higher than the rest of the, the area. Um, so that's a good case for maybe just rotating your cakes now and then. And so I guess the case where you would get mold then is let's say you're shooting for like 68 relative humidity. You got a bunch of hygrometers in there. You're pretty much regularly hitting around 67, 68 RH. Um, but then uh, what if that humid quarter is five points higher? And then you're talking about 73. And then you're talking about sort of a borderline area where there really could be a significant amount of mold risk uh, there. So you could solve that airflow by having a little bit of air circulate. You could run fans now and then. Personally, I don't think that's necessary at all. Um, and airflow, you also sacrifice. Uh, if you apply too much airflow to a cake, for instance, if I just stored tea on my shelf, it would both dry out and a lot of the aroma would disappear too. And I think part of that is the extra airflow that's being applied. So I think storing tea on a shelf without something like a, uh, a Ziploc or a Mylar bag is probably too much airflow unless you're trying to specifically air it out or something like that. Um, like you got a particularly dank cake uh, shipped to you. Um, and uh, the last point I'm gonna make about airflow is I do see some people reach the sort of conclusions with their own storage setup uh, that the way to introduce airflow is not through fans or something, but by just opening the door slightly uh, for this, uh, for, for like the Euro cave or, um, or whatever Pumador you're using. I also think this is a bad idea um, because it actually makes a really, really significant um, difference in your storage and you're gonna start to leak humidity like crazy, especially if you're adding it. So you're gonna probably have to up that uh, significantly. Um, so uh, long story short, I think it, it can really be kind of a pain in the ass to, um, to try to store uh, tea with, uh, with sort of like an open container, um, or, or that sort of situation and not a totally sealed thing. Um, I am however convinced that, uh, having tea that's sealed in something like this is, uh, is relatively safe. Um, whether it's possible to totally vacuum seal and stuff like that and have uh, good storage results. I think that's slightly more up for debate, mainly just because we don't have enough, um, uh, different examples there. So uh, Hojo tea is another one that's been sort of storing tea in that manner. 
Okay, so hopefully that was coherent enough um, and uh, we can have some interesting talking points. Um, so I'm sure there's going to be plenty of people that watch this and are like, ah, oh, screw that guy. He's totally wrong about Airflow. Um, but uh, yeah, so let me know what you think of this. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. I will see you all next time.